In this video, we will look at example implementations of the operator interface. We discussed this interface already in a previous video, so I assume that you know about the principal idea of this interface. So what are possible implementations of that? I will assume that the chunk, so the granule, is a row in the following. Again, it doesn't have to be like that, but in order to show the following examples, I will assume that this is a row. So in the selection operator, we have two private attributes here. That is the input operator as before. We have this predicate called cell, and that is executed then later on here in the next call. Open works as before. We also call open on the input operator. We also call close on the input operator. And then what we do here in this loop is we retrieve the next element from the input, assign it to this temporary variable. And then once we did that, and we only run into the loop if this is not equal null. So if you're not at the end of the stream again, so if temp is not equal null, we execute the actual filter condition, this predicate. We call cell.execute temp. Only if this year the predicate, this execution of the predicate returns true with this specific row, we actually return the row. If not, we keep on looping, looping, looping. Eventually we hit the end of the stream, so that happens if this fails and then we return null and then it's over. So that is the idea of the selection operator. Really, really simple. So basically just delegating all of those individual rows to a function call to this predicate. Let's look at a more complex example here. I want to return numbers in a specific range, numbers from from to to. So this is a closed interval that I want to return by calling next on this operator. So what I do here is I keep those boundaries of the interval. I assign this to the internal variables from and to. Open and close don't do anything. But then here, what happens in next, I could run a loop. I could say, I initialize this loop iterating over current and it starts with from, checks this condition and then always increments this variable. So I enter the loop and return this current variable. Of course, this doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, let's really write it down. This is wrong, of course, because every time I enter this function call, I will be returning, I will be reinitializing this variable. So if this is set to whatever, from and to is set to, let's say 42 to 77, every time I call next here, I set current to 42 and return 42. So the sequence being returned here is 42, 42, 42, 42, and so forth. And it will never stop returning elements. That's not what we want to have, obviously. So in these kind of situations, it's important to keep the state that I use in the loop as part of the class, the outside class. This should be an attribute. This should be the state. And how that works is shown here. That is the correct way of doing that. Here, I use an extra integer variable reflecting the current number I'm about to return. So. This looks very similar to what we had before. So also before, if you go back to this wrong example, we initialized these from and to variables with the ranges I'm interested in. But I have this third variable, which is initialized in the open call. So here I set current to be from. That is the starting number I want to use. And then you see here in the actual next method, there's no for loop anymore. This doesn't make sense here. What I do here is I just check whether this current variable is smaller or equal to the, the upper range of that interval. If that is the case, I determine the next value to return, which is current. Yeah? So I set next to return to current. I increment current by one value, and that is, of course, kept here as a state of this instance of this class. And then I return that value. So the value I had before incrementing this value. This is still, at this point, this is by one smaller than current, of course. That is what happens here. In the other case, if this condition, so whenever I enter this, whenever I enter this check and I feel like this is violated, then I return null to signal, no, this is not valid anymore. 
But this means that this state, the current is incremented, but current is part of this instance, of course. And therefore, I will return the correct sequence. So if my sequence is 4277, that is the sequence I'm interested in. What happens is the first time I enter that, remember that current is set to 42. So here I see 42, smaller equals 77. Next to return is set to current, which is 42. Then current is incremented by one. So after this call, current is set to 43. However, here I still return 42 and so forth and so forth. Until eventually I violate that condition and 77 is returned last and then 78 is not returned anymore. So you have to be careful with loops. You can't program with operators as you program with standard procedural code. You have to be very careful to understand where the state is kept, which state should be kept by the operator and which should not be kept. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.